I believe our true identity comes from God's faith in us, not our faith in God. So what about the faith needed for our salvation? Where does faith come from? How much faith is needed? Whose faith saves us? And these are all very valid questions. And a lot of people ask these type of questions. But I actually think they're asking that question because they don't actually know the reality of what God has done and think we need to do something to get what God has done to work for us. And I think God wants us to understand that the very fabric of the universe is founded on grace and faith, but not ours, his. And his grace is limitless. Ephesians 2.8, by grace you have been saved through faith. That is not of yourselves. So here is very clear that the faith that we are saved through is not ours. It's the gift of God, not as a result of works, so that no one may boast. So I cannot come to God and say, look at my great faith that saved me. Because I don't have and never did have that measure of faith. And I don't think anyone has. What we do have is the gift that has been given to us to enable us to come to that realization of what the truth is so that it is not by works. And this is really what defines the old and the new covenant and how faith worked in the old covenant and how faith works in the new covenant is really defined around, is it a gift that comes from God or is it a production of our works or how much faith we try and generate or how hard we try and believe? And the reality is it's nothing to do with what we do at all. By grace, through the gift of God's faith, not by our faith and certainly not by our works. So we're not saved by our faith in God, but by the faith that is of or from God. And they have slightly different meanings, of course. You know, it's, one is the faith of God is that God has faith enough for our salvation. The other is God gives us faith, the faith that comes from him to enable us to have a realization of the reality of what he feels about us. Translation of that is often translated our faith in God. It isn't actually our faith in God. We don't own it. We didn't do it. It came freely and God gifted us to us. And God has an amazing way of looking at us, amazing thoughts about us. And each one of those thoughts is absolutely wonderfully good. So in English, it's usually translated faith in. But in Greek, it's more accurately the faith of or from. This little word in or of makes a huge difference to our experience, our understanding and our whole life in walking with God. Because one will be driven to try and have enough faith and probably always afraid we've not got enough or we'll just receive it from him, or realize that his faith is enough for us. Therefore, we don't have to strive. Now, I'm going to look at a few Bible verses that talk about this word faith in or from or of. Philippians 3, 9. And may be found in him not having a righteousness of my own, derived from the law, but that which is through faith in Christ. That is the usual English translation. Now, if that is the case, then I might not have righteousness of my own from the law, but I do have, therefore, in this understanding, the righteousness which comes from my, from God on the basis of my faith. But if you change that from in to from, let's read it again, Philippians 3, 9, and may be found in him, not having a righteousness of my own, derived from the law, but that which is through faith from Christ, the righteousness which comes from God on the basis of the faith which comes from Christ, that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings, which doesn't mean I have to suffer. It just means I enter into what his suffering has done for me, being conformed to his death. In other words, when he died, I died in order that I may attain to the resurrection from the dead, which is the reality of what happened to mankind after the cross and through the resurrection. So this little word in makes a huge difference. Am I trying to have righteousness which comes on the basis of my faith? Or am I receiving the reality that he's made me righteous because of who he says I am 
therefore I just need to agree with them. In fits with a works-based theology, but of or from fits with a grace-inclusive understanding. Galatians 2.20 is another one of those scriptures. I have been crucified with Christ, and it is no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. Now, I wonder how many people have tried to crucify themselves daily, taking up their cross and trying to follow him, living in misery and weary and burdened, trying to be good enough to please God or earn his love. So many people are still caught in that trap. We have been crucified with Christ because we died with him when he died. Not because we did anything, but he did it on our behalf. And now I no longer live. Christ lives in me. So I have a new life. I am a new creation in Christ. The life which I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God. But then change that to of or from the Son of God and you get a completely different meaning. So the uh, my life lived in my relationship with God is not by my faith, how much I can believe to make it happen, but his faith, his faith or the faith that he gives me to enable me. And the son of God who loved me and gave himself up for me, I do not nullify the grace of God for if righteousness comes through the law, then Christ died needlessly. Righteousness comes in no other way than by grace and that grace is limitless as a description and an outworking of unconditional love so again look at the king james and this is where the king james does get this i am crucified with christ nevertheless i live yet not i but christ liveth in me and the life which i now live in the flesh i live by faith of the son of god who loved me and gave himself up for me it is the unconditional love of god the unconditional love of Jesus who gave himself so I can have life, so you can have life, so the world can have its lost identity removed and find and discover the reality of their identity as children of God. So whose faith am I saved by and live by? My faith in God or God's faith in me or God's faith given to me? Definitely the second. Am I relying on the measure of my faith to save me, however small amount I think I need, or am I trusting in God's faithfulness? Because God is faithful to do what he promised, and God predestined us to a face-to-face -face restored relationship in love. This was always his intention for every one of his children, and I guarantee that his, his intention is going to be fulfilled in the end of the day. So does in or of really matter absolutely it does totally matter when it comes to this reality and when it comes to our daily life and how we live on a daily basis it is so important that we realize that this is a gift this is not hard work or effort the difference obviously is one has the faith as the possession of the son and the other has the faith of the possession of us now who is going to be more faithful jesus or us, do you think? Well, I know the answer to that, and I guess so do you. He is faithful. So the question then is, which is the best reading? Now, this is a grammatical structure, so I'm just going to give it to you. I'm not sure I understand it, but the subjective genitive or the objective genitive? And this is, in technical terms, how you understand this. Dan Wallace's Greek grammar beyond the basics. He and, in fact, many grammarians of our day are actually in favor of the King James Version's rendering of of and not in. The grammatical argument for the objective genitive in then has little to commend it, but it is the most common one in most modern translations. So Hebrews 11.6, without faith, it's impossible to please him. For he who comes to God must believe that he is, and he is a rewarder of those who seek him. That was the reality in the old covenant. Jesus has fully pleased the Father, and we are all included in him in the new covenant. Jesus made a covenant with the Father. We're entered into that covenant because we've been included in him. Therefore, we don't need faith to please God. We're already pleasing to him. So we need to understand how they thought in the old covenant. So we make sure we're not caught up in the same type of thinking today. We need new covenant thinking. 
we're already pleasing to God because of what Jesus has done and because we are his children. What good father does not love his children unconditionally? And God is the best father and he loves us totally and completely unconditionally. If you enjoy these videos, would you please take a moment to like, comment and subscribe? It really does help. Thank you very much.